Over the last four years, scientists from 23 institutions in 17 countries have worked together in the EU project DEVOTES. Their aim has been to develop innovative tools for assessing good environmental status in our seas. Dr. Angel Borja has been leading this large team of scientists from a broad range of disciplines. Uh, we have done a lot of work, and very nice work, among different institutes and among different groups of uh, scientists uh, coming from sociology, uh, economics, uh, biology, engineers. And the main aim was to try to develop something that can help uh, uh, managers and uh, uh, policy makers in order to assess the status of the marine waters. And I think that this is probably the most important outcome from the project because we are dealing with the Marine Strategy Framework Directive in which member states and the European Commission and the regional sea conventions need to understand how biodiversity is producing or can produce or can help in producing healthy oceans. And for doing this, we need to develop different tools like monitoring tools, models, uh, understanding the relations between pressures and impacts and finally develop assessment tools to understand how healthy oceans are providing these ecosystem services. How does human pressure influence our seas? This is one of the questions that Professor Mike Elliott and a team of scientists within the votes have tried to answer. We try to look at the whole sequence of the way society uses and, and even abuses the sea. Society has a lot of uh, desires, what we call drivers. You know, we want, we want to be able to have recreation, we want to move goods, things like that. What that does is it leads to activities. We go out and fish or we build ports. And what those activities do is they create pressures, what we call pressures. And a pressure is a mechanism of change in the sea. So for example, if we decided to build a port here, then we would have to dredge the bottom. We'd have to deepen the bottom to get the boats in. That dredging is a pressure. It is going to create a change in the system. So we need a way of measuring that change. So what we did in votes was look at ways of measuring that change. Now, if you multiply that one example, dredging for a port, with everything else we do, fishing, recreation, all of these have pressures. So we need to find ways of measuring all of those pressures at the same time. One of the ways of looking at this is to call it a footprint and we talk about a, a spatial footprint how big an area is a footprint and also a, a temporal footprint how long does a footprint last so every pressure that we can create from all of these activities like fishing and navigation all, all of those um, pressures leave its own footprint the skill for the scientists is to try and measure that footprint and then to tell the policymakers what um, processes we need, what measures we need to control it, to minimise it. And the aim is to make our footprint as small as possible because the bigger the footprint, the more damage it would have on the natural system. What does healthy and productive seas mean to us? And is it possible to put a monetary value on it? In Devotes, biologists and economists have worked together to define and evaluate the services provided by the marine environment with the aim of helping managers to make good decisions for the future. If we want to think about the benefits of achieving good environmental status, uh, we have to look at the different ecosystem services that are provided and think about what do we gain in terms of ecosystem services, in terms of our interaction with the marine environment and what we get from the marine environment, 
versus the costs of achieving that sustainability. Ecosystem services is a scientific term that we use for the benefits, for the values that nature brings to people. Uh, so it's, it's, it's thinking about our interactions with the marine environment for food, uh, for cultural services like uh, leisure and recreation, the great tourism you see here, people enjoying themselves on the water, eating great seafood in the restaurants in a tourist resort like this one here. But it's also about maintaining our climate, uh, having safe climate and proper air to breathe. We can do those valuation by looking at the obvious things. So we know seafood has a price, and we know people pay to go and be tourists or to enjoy boats and recreation. The more difficult things to value about, for example, biodiversity. So a lot of people feel that we shouldn't put a value on it. Uh, they think it's too important to put a value on it. But I would argue that value isn't just about monetary value. It's not just about euros. It can be about a feeling that something is so important that you want to introduce some very complicated legislation like the Marine Strategy Framework Directive to protect it. And just by saying that it's so important you want to do that, you've put a value judgment on it. Whether we want to convert that to euros is another thing. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It's quite difficult to take those emotive feelings and convert those into monetary value. But the economists, and we have some very good economists in Devotes, will try to do that where they can. In Devotes, scientists have searched for ways of assessing the environmental status of our seas. Anastina Heiskanen and her colleagues have tried to develop a toolbox tailor-made for each of the regional seas a toolbox containing a large number of so-called indicators. A good indicator is a measure of the nature or an ecosystem that tells us uh, how the uh, human activities are impacting that specific part of the, of the, of the uh, marine ecosystem. For instance, we can have indicators of fish and uh, the size of the fish population will tell us how strong the pressure from the fisheries is. So that's one indicator. Also, uh, we have uh, human pressures, nutrient loading and eutrophication in many marine areas. And for that purpose, uh, we can study the different uh, algae in the coastal areas. So we need different kind of indicators to tell about the different parts and different aspects of the ecosystem and the food web. We have uh, done an extensive review of, of uh, available biodiversity indicators in the marine uh, areas in Europe, but also outside Europe. So we have constructed a database that has about 600 indicators. And in fact, we are, we are covering all, all the European regional seas, so from the Baltic to the Northeast Atlantic, Mediterranean, and, and the Black Sea. And the aim of this database is to, is to help the managers to have a consistent and uh, comparable way also to, to assess marine biodiversity in, in different uh, regions. A lot of marine organisms live on the seabed. Some thrive in steep slopes, others on flat bottom. Some prefer hard bottom, while other again prefer soft. So knowing what the seabed looks like will tell us a lot about the organisms living there. We've been looking at how to model uh, seabed conditions, particularly, uh, and the reason for that is we don't have information everywhere on the seabed, so we have to try and find a way to give that information as best possible with the data that we have. So for, for seabed mapping, we are reliant on bathymetry information. So we look at the shape and the texture of the seabed, and that gives us some information as to what kind of habitats uh, the seabed provides for the, the biology.
The Marine Strategy Framework Directive is a spatial uh, management strategy. So we are trying to make sure that the complete area of the seabed and the complete area of the, the marine waters uh, of Europe are covered by our uh, scientific understanding. So we have to be able to have information everywhere to give a balanced and even uh, consideration to our, our planning. So we've been trying to collect as much information as we can from as many sources as we can using information from fishermen and from scientific research cruises to bring that together and to create a very detailed and broad scale map of the seabed that lets us then plan what our activities are going to be uh, and how we're going to manage uh, human activities on the seabed. One of the aims of the votes has been to explore how modern technology can be used to assess the environmental status of our seas. The main aim of uh, our work is to develop, to test and validate new methods, new instruments to study marine uh, ecosystems and to assess marine environmental status. During these years we understand that uh, oceans are not only big mammals or fishes, but also microbes. Uh, microscopic organisms count, so this invisible world, this microscopic world is important because they are um, uh, interesting microsensors. They can um, give information of early warning. And secondly, we are from, uh, we are one step from a genomic revolution, so we need to use DNA to assess environmental status, to study marine biodiversity, so we need the DNA to answer the big questions. What we understand is that we need, of course, a robot, a machine to collect data in a more efficient way, in a quicker way, but a robot cannot substitute a man yet. So um, what we understood is that uh, we need to um, uh, combine the expertise of taxonomists with the work of molecular ecologists uh, to assess the environmental status. To assess the environmental status of our seas, it is necessary to monitor biodiversity. But what is biodiversity and how is it possible to monitor it? During the years of devotes and previous projects, one of the interesting things is that we are all using the word biodiversity. It's one of the most frequently used keywords in biological or ecological research. But if you ask 10 people, what do you mean by biodiversity? You're gonna get 10 different answers, and they're all right. The internationally recognized definition of biodiversity spans from genes to species, to communities, populations, and to ecosystems. It covers habitats, so when I talk to you about biodiversity, maybe I'm meaning how many species are on the sea floor. And I talk to um, a fisheries expert and they're talking, they want to know how, what's the ratio of large fish to small fish. And you talk to someone else and they want to know what's, the, what's an environmental impact on the marine environment. They're all right. But we end up arguing about what is marine biodiversity. And one of the things we have done and which I think is a very important way is that we have tried to make a conceptual understanding of how we look at biodiversity so that we have a common communication platform. So we have made some conceptual views. We can look at biodiversity from the, the point of view of how many, what kinds of organisms. I can go here and take a sample of the water or the seafloor um, and count how many animals are there. And that's one view of biodiversity. We could go and have a look at food webs. We want to know who's eating who. And that's another view. We want to know maybe how the whole ecosystem is functioning. 
and that would be another view. And from each of these starting points, we look at what is the critical uh, aspects. And if we want to make an assessment for each particular viewpoint, then we look at the critical aspects and we need to have indicators for each of the, these aspects. And the type of indicators you select will depend on what your question is. What is your viewpoint of biodiversity? And then you will select your indicators ba on that basis. And I think for, for me, that's one of the, um, a very huge progress of devotes is this, that we are arriving at a common conceptual understanding. Again, what is biodiversity?